All right. Wow. This is kind of weird because I'm used to asking questions and getting you guys to have some feedback with this. And so it's going to be kind of kind of strange not to have that this time. But, you know, I will work with what we have. So um, you've seen the vocabulary with Mr. Allen and you have read through the story with Mrs. Eddington at this point. So we're going to dig a little bit deeper into the story today. Um, there's going to be one question that I'm going to want you to put an answer to in the comments, and I will let you know which one that is when we get to it. All right, so we have our essential question, first of all, and that was, why are goals important? So with Mr. Allen, you learned that goals, um, a goal is a purpose for going forward with something. Um, why is that important? Um, you know, it's, it's kind of like the feeling I get when I make a list of jobs I need to do and I get something finished and I'm able to mark that off. It makes me feel good. So when I have goals, I move forward towards those. It gives me a reason to keep moving forward toward those, to keep working toward that. And when I get it accomplished, it gives me a good feeling. So that to me is why uh, we find that goals are important. Um, so we're going to talk about keywords it has to do with our first question here. Keywords are important words to the topic. Um, in many cases with our textbooks, they're going to be in bold print, but that's not always going to be the case. So you do need to be able to recognize them. So it has to do with our topic. Um, it has to be important. And so they're telling you here in paragraphs one and two to find the keyword. All right. So again, you know, just kind of skimming through here. He loved to build rockets and launch them. He was when he was a boy. Um, he grew up watching the star, the rockets, and um, he worked hard in school. And oh, here's a word in bold: astronomy. All right. So um, astronomy is um, astro is the stars, astronomy is the study of so study of the stars, and um, This is a key word because it's telling me what James Lovell's goal was. What is this story going to be about? It's going to be about James Lovell and his goals. And so part of that was to study astronomy. So underlining the details that show it, he worked hard in school. He planned to go to a special college to study astronomy and rockets. All right. Our next question has to do with sequence and we've talked about sequence as well that is the order of events in a story the order they happened in and so what they want us to find in paragraph three um, and rereading which you know how important that is you have to go back and find the answers in the text what did james do after he joined the navy all right so paragraph one two and three he was motivated to find a way to fly rockets. You know, he didn't have enough money to go to his um, school choice. So he went to a college near his home for two years. He signed up for flight training with the Naval Academy. He spent four years there and then he joined the Navy. So what happens after that? He became a professional Naval test pilot and his job was to fly brand new planes before anyone else was allowed to. All right. Now, how, how does the author here? explain or help us understand how motivated James Lovell was to become an astronaut. All right, so I notice here that he lists several steps that James had to take to accomplish that goal. You know, the first one didn't work. Did James give up and say, yeah, well, I can't do that because I can't go to that school? No, he found another way. And so I think right in here is where the author is telling us how motivated James was because he kept trying to find a way to do that. All right, let's move on to page 102. And this is something I've talked to you a lot about too, Greek and Latin roots. A lot of our English words are made of words from other languages. Okay, we had a lot of people, you know, that, that moved into Europe and then the United States and and so their words have made their way into the English language. A lot of those with Greek and Latin being a couple of the oldest languages, a lot of them are Greek and Latin. All right, so it says circle the word astronaut. I've done that in two places here. 
And what does an astronaut do? Well, an, that prefix astro has to do with the stars or the heavens and not is a sailor. So an astronaut is a sailor of the heavens or the stars. Okay, so knowing those, anytime I see that word astro in some other word, I know that's going to have to do with the stars. If I see that word not in some other word, I know that's going to have to do with sailor or sailing. All right, here's the one that I would like you to put an answer to in um, the comments with this. All right, so problem and solution. Now, problem and solution is a text structure. A text structure is... How does the author choose to write the book or the story to tell what's going on? All right. Many, many stories have problems and solutions. Um, so that's what this author has chosen to do. He's telling you the problem that they have and how do they solve it? So I want you, it says you're going to read paragraphs two through four. I'm going to leave this up for a few minutes and give you some time to write your answer. So this is all paragraph one. Don't have to read that. All right, I want to start here. James flew on three space missions, and then in April 1970, he became commander of the Apollo 13 mission. This was a big responsibility and a great honor. This was also one of the biggest challenges of James's life. Apollo 13 was supposed to land on the moon. Two days after leaving Earth, however, the spacecraft had a serious problem. One of its oxygen tanks exploded. The crew did not have enough power or air to breathe. They could not make it to the moon. James communicated with the experts at NASA. No one knew what to do at first. Then the team on the ground did some research and came up with a solution. The astronauts followed the team's directions and built an invention using plastic bags, cardboard, and tape. It worked. It cleaned the air in the spacecraft. But the next problem was even bigger. How were the astronauts going to get back to Earth? All right, so quickly, just, you know, a few words. It doesn't even have to be a complete sentence. Um, tell me what their problem was. While you're finishing that up, we'll talk just a little bit about why is big challenges a good heading for this section. All right. Um, there were a lot of challenges in, in this mission. OK, uh, you know what to do about the oxygen tank exploding. How are they going to get enough air? How are they going to get back to Earth? So these were all big challenges. And so that's what makes this a good heading for those paragraphs. All right, you didn't have to write a complete sentence or anything, and, and so I'm gonna move on then to page 103. So, um, again, looking at paragraphs one and two, reread. Why was the trip back to Earth so difficult? All right, so, you know, another good strategy to use here is to find some keywords. So, you know, trip, Earth, difficult. So let's just kind of skim through here and see if we can't find something here that's going to help us with that. Oh, trip, Earth. All right. So that sounds like we might be where we need to be. The trip back to Earth was dangerous and scary. For almost four days, the astronauts traveled in the cramped capsule. They were cold, thirsty, and hungry. All right. And I tried about four times and that would not underline hungry. And it was um, underlining the words and everything that, that the computer considered to be a line. So I couldn't get him to take that away. Um, so this is another text feature, though. Um, it's a, a text box. And it just remember that gives you extra information that doesn't fit into a biography. It's talking about going to space camp. All right. That doesn't fit into the biography of James Lovell at all, but it's information that the author wanted us to have. So he puts it in a separate area and that way he can give us that information without interrupting the story. So that's the purpose of a text box. All right. Um, so why was that trip back so very difficult? 
For almost four days, they traveled in a tiny, cramped capsule. They were cold, thirsty, and hungry. They really weren't even sure they were going to make it back to Earth. Okay, so it was very, very scary, very dangerous, and um, kind of a miracle that they really made it back. All right, so I think as we go through some of these other pages, I think we've pretty much covered everything we need to cover. I've already talked about the Greek and Latin roots. Um, again, remember, rereading is probably, that is like my go-to strategy. Um, you know, you don't understand something, go back and reread. You need to find the answer to a question, go back and reread. That's going to help you more than anything else. We talked about keywords. Photographs, of course, are pictures taken with a camera as opposed to illustrations, which are drawn by an artist. Problem and solution. So here's just a chart. The problem is, um, at first, James didn't have enough money to go to a special college. So how did he solve that? He took these steps. We've talked about that, but that just puts it into kind of a visual form there. All right. I think that is it. I think we have pretty much. Um, covered the things that we need to cover in this. Now remember, and you guys know this because you've been working on your biography projects, that this is a biography. It was the story of James Lovell. He is a real person and it's told by another person. So that's the definition of biography. And it includes those text features that we've mentioned as well. All right. I hope you guys are all well and um, we'll be talking to you again a little bit later. Bye.